Soul Focus, The Daily Discipline of Speaking to Your Soul, Episode 1. Hi, I'm Mark Ritchie, and I'm really, really glad you're listening to this. Learning to speak to my soul has been the greatest discovery of my Christian life. And I'm really excited about you going on this journey with me. Uh, I'm a Christian communicator. I've been speaking for the last 30 years all over the world, talking to people about God. I'm a Scottish guy who lives in England and I've got a great, wonderful, rich life. But I've learned something in the last couple of years that has really impacted me deeply in regards to my soul. What happened is I, in 2011, was watching, along with many other people, the riots in Great Britain. Some of you will remember when the cities were getting torn apart and people were like pillaging all the department stores and there were lots of fires and it was just a horrendous time. And I remember sobbing and weeping before God because I love Great Britain And here, it seemed like Britain was tearing itself apart, was hurting itself. And as I prayed and called on God, I really felt God ask me to do one of the biggest and most demanding missions of my life. And that was something called Cross Britain. I felt God ask me to actually carry a cross over Britain. I walked from Brighton up to Edinburgh in Scotland, and then I was transported round to Wrexham in Wales, and I walked across from Wales right across to Hull. I carried a cylindrical cross. This aluminium cross was incredible because it gave people the opportunity to write their sins on post-it notes and actually put it inside the cross. We had some incredible encounters with lots of people being hugely impacted as they wrote their sins on these post-it notes and stuck them inside the cross. Unbelievably, I was doing 30 events in the evenings as well, so I was absolutely shattered. Over 70 days, I walked 700 miles, carrying a cross, preaching in all kinds of venues, in meeting and encountering people in pubs and in clubs and in streets and all kinds of different settings, doing my shows in churches and in theatres. It really was the most demanding thing I've ever done. When I crossed that line at Hull, I was absolutely done. I physically, I was completely and utterly shattered. Emotionally, I was so fried. I was, I've never been like it. And spiritually, I was taken completely to the limit. I had been through probably one of the biggest and most exciting spiritual encounters of my life. And when I crossed that line, I thought that that was the end. But actually, it turned out that that was only the beginning of my journey. What happened next was actually one of the biggest and most powerful revelations of my life. I finished the mission and then plunged into one of the darkest seasons of my soul. I went into complete and utter inner chaos. Over the next few months, I just kept on crying. I would would be crying in my car, I sometimes would be at events and I would go to the church toilet and I would start sobbing in the church cubicle. I even like would sometimes go to Starbucks, which was just two minutes down from different venues, and I would find myself crying in the coffee shop. Just a little side note, if you ever do want to cry randomly, coffee houses are good places to cry because you get free coffee, so just a little life tip. But... I was in complete and utter inward carnage. It was horrendous. 
I'm a really positive, upbeat guy. And, you know, anyone who's ever heard me speak knows that I like telling stories. I like making people laugh. I like to be the life and centre of the party. And then suddenly here I was. I, I, I absolutely was just destroyed on the inside. I thought some of the darkest things I've ever thought. I was faced with these inward challenges and I, I couldn't understand or express what was going on. Lots of people around my life asked me to put a label on it and they asked me, what do you think it is? People said, are you depressed? Some people said, are you anxious? You know, was it post-event blues or was it just empty? Did Cross Britain, this huge mission, did Cross Britain actually cause it? You know, this caused me to really look inside myself, but I really came to the place to understand Cross Britain, this massive mission, didn't cause it. I believe that Cross Britain exposed it. You see, when I was a little kid, my dad taught me how to fix a puncture in my bike. And he, it was so cool, you know, you're working there along with your dad and you've got the inner tube and you've got the bowl of water and you're kind of putting that inner tube into the bowl and suddenly you see the bubbles and there, that's where the tear is. But you see, that water did not cause the tear. The water exposed the tear. The, the water exposed where the problem was. And I suddenly realised that the mission, it didn't cause the problem. The mission exposed the problem. That actually, for quite a long time, I was not in a great place inside. Sure, on the outside, I was, I was able to keep the plate spinning and people thought, yeah, Mark loves laughing, Mark's the life and soul of the party, all is well. But actually, inwardly, things were not great and things were out of order. You see, I couldn't honestly put my hand on my heart and say, it is well with my soul. So here I was, inwardly tearing myself up. Strong emotions inside were throwing their weight around and I was just giving in to these emotions. My wife couldn't understand that some of the things that I was like saying, she says, Mark, but you don't believe that. And I would be like saying, Tamsin, this is how I feel. This is what is going on inside me. I feel this. My emotions were throwing their weight around. I was being bullied by my own emotions. I had destructive thoughts that were, were driving me. I was in a mess. And then I cried out to God. You know, I told you that I, I'm a Christian speaker and I, I love God and I would cry out to God and I was asking for God to, to maybe kind of magic wand this pain away. You know, I was kind of hoping that God would be able to kind of wipe all this inward chaos away. But what actually happened was that this whole thing led me to see an incredible revelation that has changed my life and one that I want to unpack with you now. I'll never forget where I was. I was sitting by the River Trent in Nottingham and I was just kind of slightly praying, slightly watching what was going on. And then I saw a rowing boat come down the river. You know, it's quietly, effectively moving forward. Every rower was in beautiful rhythm. Every rower was in alignment. It was wonderful. You know the kind of boats I mean. Maybe you've seen it in the Cambridge-Oxford boat race or maybe you've seen it in the Olympics when you see those six or eight rowers and they're, they're, they're rowing together and they're moving forward. They're gliding forward so beautifully. And God began to speak to me. And God began to show me this picture. God said, you know, that rowing boat, with those six rowers, that's like you on the inside. The rowing boat is a picture of your soul. The boat is your soul. And then God began to show me that the rowers are a picture of my emotions, my will, 
my thoughts that my will and my thoughts and my emotions were all the rowers that were inside my soul. But then I began to see something else. I saw the rowing cocks at the end of the boat. You know, the, the, the guy is normally a little bit smaller than the other rowers. Um, he or she's mic'd up and they're speaking to the rowers. And the more they speak, they, they keep that rowing boat in alignment they keep that beautiful rhythm going and the boat is able to move forward beautifully and God began to speak to me and say Mark that is your role you are the rowing cocks you have got to speak to your soul you have got to speak to your emotions to speak to your will and to speak to your thought life in 3 John chapter 1, John says this, Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. Wow, I love that. Your soul moving forward well. That beautiful equilibrium that whatever's going on, actually your soul is in good rhythm and in a sweet place. And I was like, yes, God, yes, God. That's what I want. I want my soul to be moving forward along well, to be getting along well. But I suddenly looked inside me and I could see that like, it was like my rowers were in chaos. So imagine if there was a boat and the rowers, their oars are all clashing with each other and actually the boat is going round in circles rather than sweetly forward. And suddenly I realised that I had a big responsibility, that suddenly I understood that I would have to move into a time of this daily discipline of speaking to my soul that I was the one that was going to have to do this work, that it wasn't a case of God just like changing my circumstances. It wasn't God just in heaven, just kind of making it all go away. But actually my responsibility, my job was to speak to my soul. I needed to take the lead. I realised that I was the cocks of the boat. It wasn't up to the rowers to speak. You know, when I watched that boat on the River Trent, the rowers were not talking. You know, I need to speak up. It's not about letting my emotions always speak. It's not about letting my destructive emotions dictate what is happening. You know, it's not about allowing my disempowering, destructive thoughts throw their weight around. I needed to take charge. I needed to learn to speak to my soul. You know, we must speak to ourselves more than we listen to ourselves. I realized my thoughts are not in charge. Just because I think something doesn't mean it's true. You know, I got myself to such a place that if I was feeling it, I was like, well, it must be true because this is how I feel. And yet I was starting to understand, no, feelings are not facts. That feelings can lie to you. That there are times when your feelings are telling you something and it goes against what God's told you and it, tell, it goes against what the Bible says about you. We can't just allow our feelings to dictate what is going on. My emotions like to be seen and heard, but I have to lead my emotions. I have to harness them. We cannot ignore our feelings or try to pretend we have no emotions. You know, um, I'm a good British guy and I've noticed that Brits are really good at trying to hide their emotions. Experts at like pushing their emotions down. We've become exceptionally good at like trying that, you know, we're famous for the stiff upper lip, you know, pretending that we don't feel anything. But when you absolutely press your emotions down, what happens? It's a bit like, you know, in a swimming pool, maybe on holiday and you've got a beach ball and if you push that beach ball under the surface of the water, yeah, 
for a little while, it looks like it's gone. The ball is not around. But we all know that that ball is just under the water. And as soon as the pressure builds up, it's going to spring up. And it's probably going to spring up at the most unhelpful time. And that's a bit like our emotions. If we press them down and pretend that they don't exist and try and just like, kind of like say, oh, I'm, I'm not going to feel any of this, then actually all we're doing is pressing it under the surface and then emotions will spring up. And when they do spring up, they spring up at the most unhelpful. Uh, but just when that pressure builds up, suddenly, just like that ball springs out the pool, so our emotions can absolutely just come out at the most unhelpful times. You know, we're not to suppress our emotions. They're really important. We must listen to our emotions but we must not let them lead us. We must talk to them. We must steer them. We point our thoughts and our feelings in the right direction. Like the cocks of the boat, speaking and steering. And we see in the Bible that David spoke to his soul. And so, taking David's lead, in the next few episodes, we're going to find out what we actually say to our soul. What should we actually say? If we're in agreement that, yes, it's good to speak to our soul, what actual words do we say over our soul? And so I'm excited that this discipline has changed my life, that I have learned and understood that I am the cocks of the boat, and that I must speak to my soul every day, this daily discipline of speaking to my soul. Thanks for listening to this episode of Soul Focus. I hope you found this helpful and engaging. Be sure to catch up with the rest of the series.